Welcome back once again to this introductory series for Path of Exile. If this is the first video you're seeing, I'd recommend heading back to the first in the series before continuing on. Also take note that this series is for those who are extremely new to Path of Exile and its mechanics. In the last video, we looked at some of those mechanics and how some of the endgame content unlocks and how it works. Today we'll be looking at the biggest single kind of mechanic in the game, as well as a few quick tips. Get ready, because we're going to go through a whole lot of these quickly. It's time for currencies. To start off, I'm only going to be covering some of these basic currencies to get you started and show how they work. The more complex things like crafting in-game maps may be covered elsewhere, depending on how this series does. For all the currencies, in order to apply them, you right-click on the stack and then left-click on the item to apply it. Just like this. We'll improve our armor by right-clicking on this armor scrap and left-clicking on our ring mail. Quality moves from 1% to 2%. This will give all your stats on the item a little bit of a buff. Hovering over the item will give a description as well as helpful hints, like this one for Jeweler's Orbs. It mentions that the item's quality increases the chance of obtaining more sockets. So if our armor were all the way up to quality 20%, which is the ceiling for quality on items, well, technically, it'll improve our chance at getting the max number of sockets for that item. Also, some of the items have shards, which once you complete a full stack, will create an orb or full item. Alright, here we go. Time to go down the list. We have Scrolls of Wisdom. They help you identify an item that you haven't already, like blue, gold, or orange items. Portal Scrolls open a portal to the settlement and the act you're in. Orb of Transmutations upgrade a normal or white item to a magical or blue item. Orb of Alteration, they reforge a magic item with new random modifiers. That's that blue text you see when you hover over an item. Orb of Nullment removes a random modifier from an item. An Orb of Chance upgrades a normal item, or blue, to a random rarity that's blue, gold, or even unique, the orange items. You have an Orb of Augmentation, they augment a magic item with a new random modifier, so if you've removed one with an Orb of Annulment, the Orb of Augmentation will give it a new one. A chromatic orb reforges the color of sockets on an item. This is random for each individual socket, so you may need to use quite a number of these to get the ones you want. An orb of fusing reforges the links between the sockets on the item. Keep in mind, again, it says the item's quality increases the chance of obtaining more links. Jeweler's orb, just like we said before, reforges the number of sockets on an item. An ancient orb reforges a unique equipment as another of the same item class. So, gloves will get you gloves, bows will get you a bow. An orb binding upgrades a normal item to a rare item with up to four linked sockets, doing some of your work for you already. An engineer's orb improves the quality of a strong box. You'll right click on these when they're in your inventory, then left click on the strong box in the world to improve its quality. We have an Enkindling Orb. It adds an enchantment to a utility flask that will improve it, but prevent it from gaining charges during its effect, replaces any existing enchantment. So this means that while you're, say, buffed up against fire damage, you will not gain any charges for that flask while killing enemies. An Instilling Orb adds an enchantment to a utility flask that will cause it to be used when certain conditions are met, replacing any existing enchantment. This means that maybe when you drop below a certain health threshold, it'll heal you, or its effect will go off, whatever it may be. Blacksmith Sweatstone improves the quality of a weapon, just like the armor scrap improves the quality of an armor. Glassbore's Baubles improve the quality of a flask, and Gem Cutter's Prisms improve the quality of a gem. A nice little trick for these is once a gem is level 20, trade it and one Gem Cutter's Prism to a vendor to get a level 20 quality uh, gem back, but the level itself will reset to 1, meaning that you can quickly level it back up to level 20 to gain its full power and effects. And Cartographer's Chisel improves the quality of a map. Maps are endgame content that you'll be doing much later. Uh, Regal Orb upgrade a magic item to a rare item, so blue to gold. An Orb of Alchemy upgrades a normal item to a rare item, so white to gold. A Chaos Orb reforges a rare item with brand new random modifiers, so we'll take an existing one, like our Grim Barb Wand here, and give us all brand new blue effects for it there. A Divine Orb randomizes the numeric values of the random modifiers on an item. So our Grim Barb here, how it has 12% increased fire damage, that'll be randomized. A Harbinger's Orb reforges a map as another item of a higher tier, so again maps are later on content. 
Orb of Horizons reforges a map as another of the same tier. An Orb of Regret grants a passive skill refund point. So if you've gone, used your build, uh, but maybe want to take a different path, Orb of Regrets help you get your skill points back so you can reassign them later. An Orb of Unmaking grants an Atlas passive skill refund point. So once you're in the end game and doing maps, there's a second skill tree that unlocks. This grants you those passive skill refund points for that skill tree. We have an Orb of Scouring that removes all modifiers from an item, so it turns an item back to a normal or white item. A Blessed Orb randomizes the numeric values of the implicit modifiers in an item. And a Vol Orb that corrupts an item, modifying it unpredictably. This is kind of the one way you can get an item over 20% quality. That does it for currencies. Let's have a look at a couple of the other things you can use during your campaign. We'll start with essences. Essences uh, can be used on any normal item to apply the property displayed. You can also combine any three of them by selling them to a vendor or even your inventory if you have the essence tab to get one of a higher level. So as you can see, the Essences of Fear have different levels. If we had three Wailing Essences of Fear, they can be upgraded into a single Screaming Essence of Fear. If we had a normal item, say in this case, Gloves, our minions would deal 22 to 24% increased damage. So these Essences of Fear are something that our Witch character here, being a Necromancer using a lot of minions, is probably going to want to use. Secondly, let's have a look at cards. These are Divination cards you've likely had some drop for you already. They'll have a number, in the case of three voices here, one of three, meaning that we currently have one card and we need three in order to cash them in. And they'll tell you what they'll cash in for. In this case, three essences. If you have all three, what you can do is head over to Highgate, the settlement level four, and go and visit Tasuni. Now we just happen to be in Highgate, so let's take a visit. Talk with them, click on trade divination cards, and drop any completed stack you have in the trade window here. Hit trade, and you'll get your item. Again, keep in mind, a lot of these currencies will really only be used endgame, and you'll grind through a lot of them to get that piece of gear you'd want just the way you want it. Don't be afraid to use some of them on your way through the story, but you'll want to save the majority for once you're done and on endgame content. And finally, time for some quick tips that'll be helpful for your time in Rayclast. First off, at the start of the game, left click is bound to default attack. Change this to move only by clicking on it and then on the icon for the feet. Make sure you reassign default attack to another button early game as you'll probably be using it for the first little bit. You can do this by clicking on another button and clicking on the default attack. Now move is our default to our leftmost button, and default attack is bound to our rightmost button. Second, mobility, mobility, mobility. Make sure you stay on the move and you make good use of your movement skill. Mobility is one of the keys to staying alive depending on your build while you're in ray class. When moving a lot of inventory around, holding control and then lift clicking on an item can save you a lot of time. This will quickly move it between you and either your stash or a vendor. While using a lot of orbs, like trying to get the right color of sockets on an item, hold down shift, right click on the orb you want to use. Continue to hold down shift while left clicking on the item to use the orbs. This will let you continually use the orbs out of the stack in your inventory and saves you a lot of time. Just make sure to stop when you get the sockets colors you want. Hold Alt and hover over items to see their level, which can be important in crafting, and where your roll falls among the range that it could be in. Here we can see that this grim barb wand is level 24 and that our minion roll is towards the lower half. Our minions deal 13% increased damage, but this number could have been as high as 16%. We may want to use some orbs to re-roll some of the values on these items. Make good use of your tools, like Path of Building and the Wiki. Some of my favorite websites will be in the description below, but feel free to add yours in the comments. The World Map. Press U to bring it up. Here, you can click on your quests to see where you need to go in order to do them, and also waypoints that you've unlocked. 
versus spots that have no waypoints at all. You can also see roughly where the exit from an area is. If the exit from an area is in the up left hand corner of the world, the map will also likely be up and to the left in that area. Here we can see two exits to the map that are in the upper left hand area of the map, and if we look at the world map, they're up and generally to the left or right, closely matching what it is in the world itself. This isn't an every time rule, but it's a good rule of thumb to use if you're trying to find something in the world. And finally, death. For the first five acts, death will cost you nothing in the world of Rayclast. From acts six to ten, deaths will just cost you 5% of your experience. After you've beaten the story campaign, however, deaths will cost you 10% of your current experience gained. In the later levels, 80 to 100, this can mean hours of work being undone. In the early game though, feel free to experiment around. Alright, if you've hung in the whole way, it's time to take a breath. And there we have it, five videos on things that I'd wish I'd known when starting Path of Exile. I hope you were able to pull some useful info from these, or at least enjoyed the videos. I know that we are likely getting Path of Exile 2 within the next year, maybe two, given the recent trailers coming out for it, but I wanted to put these out as I really wish that I would have known something like them back when I started playing. The spirit of these videos was to help brand new players, or maybe fill in some blanks for those that have been gone for a while. If you enjoyed them, please let me know what you learned in the comments, or give me a like, I'd really appreciate it. If there was anything you'd like me to cover in possible future videos, leave me a note as well. I hope you can grow to enjoy the game as much as I do. Most of all though, I hope you have a great day. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again. Sometime.